Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor, back today with another amazing shader pack. Now, for those of you that missed our first shader pack, which was the wood, so the wood shader pack, I'm just going to drop an image down the bottom right hand side to let you know what that was. But as you can see, here at 3D Tudor, we're really also trying to build up a huge shader database with all of the types of shaders that you're going to need, from wood to metal to stone, all of the ones that you're going to use on a regular basis, even things like glass. You can expect from all of these shaders that they'll all be highly versatile, completely done in Blender. You'll also be able to bake them out as well, so you'll be able to send them through to other things like Unreal Engine. But enough of all that, let's get started and let me show you just how good these shaders are. So first of all, you will notice that there's 10 different shaders. You'll see we've got things from bronze to black metal to things like steel to silver to gold, um, a couple of brasses in there. We've even got some obsidian as well. So let me first of all take you into one of my favorites, which is the black metal. And what I'm going to do then is show you exactly how this works. So first of all, what I've done is I've took this metal all the way back just to the base actual metal. And as you can see, it's nothing special at all. It has a little bit of shine on it, a little bit of metallic, and that's all. Let's head on over now into the shading panel then. And let me show you this setup and just how versatile it is. So if we go over to the shading panel, let it load up and let's just zoom out. And you will see that everything in here is structured really nicely and nearly neat, really neatly to let you come in and do really whatever you want with this. So first of all, let me come in and show you. We've got a base metal normal here. So let's start over here. So if I put this on something like one, you can see now we're actually starting to add a little bit of kind of these little lumps and things like that. Next of all, then we've got a metal U, metal vibrance, and metal tone. You can see that you do get some changes using these actual things. But because this metal starts off black, these things won't be relevant. I'll show you those in the actual iron and steel and gold and things like that. Now let's move all the way to the top then and let me show you some of the best stuff in this. So first of all, edgeware. We can actually bring in edgeware easily, quickly, however you want to bring it in. You can also control the edge wear opacity, as you can see. You can also control the edge wear scale. So if we come in, you can see these little scratches. Yep, they're little scratches because obviously this is metal. We can actually control the size of these. We can bring it down so they look more like uh, this if you change the scale really high. We can also control the actual weathered look of the whole of the metal as well. So if I come in and bring this up, for instance, you can see now I've got real control how I want this actual metal to look. And this is just the base, by the way. We're not even talked about yet, about all the little chips and things like that and the rust. So let's move on down. We've got our occlusion. So we all know what um, ambient occlusion is. We've gave you an option to actually bring that in to make it more dark around these kind of edges and in these little creases and things. We've also got a gradient control. So as I bring this down, you can see that gradient coming up and down. You can change the colors of the gradient as well. So you could have a slightly red tinge on it that really really makes that metal actually pop makes it look stylized if that's the look you're going for next of all then we've got the roughness if i bring this all the way up you can see we can create this really really dull metal if we bring it back to zero you can see them we've got a really really shiny metal next of all then we've got the metal blemishes so if i just come in you will see at the moment not a, let me just actually put this on something like 0.5 and then we'll be able to see those blemishes a little bit better. So if I bring these blemishes up, you can see now that's exactly what it does. Now I think that's a little bit too high. So let's put it on 0.5. Let's try that. So a little few blemishes like so. Next of all, then let's actually look at the rust. So we're able to bring in rust as well. If I start to bring this up, you can see now I'm going to highlight this rust actually and make it really bright just so you can see what I'm doing. And we do have an option down here for the rust amount. So we're able to control how much rust this actual metal has on there and how bright so how bright the actual rust is so if i drop this down you can get something a little bit more natural like so we're also able to control the scratch strength so if i bring this all the way up you will start noticing that this metal now starts to have loads of these little light like, scratches on there if i drop down the metal blemishes so let's put that down to zero now you can see those scratches actually coming in um, we're also, let's put this on something like one, bring them back a little tad. 
We also got the scale of the um, scratches. So you can see at the moment, this is how um, small uh, they are. So if I bring this all the way back, so if I bring this back, you can see now we're actually able to control how they look. Next of all, then we've got the chips. So little chips, if you want little chips in your actual metal. So let's put this on 0.5. And there you go. You can see we've got little chips. And again, we're also able to control how big or how small these actually are. And you can see how easily we can change this metal into really anything that we want to. Now, if we come out, we've also got the rust size. So for instance, if I um, bring in a little bit more rust, like so, I'm also able to go and control how big or small that actual rust is. Um, and then finally, we've got, as I said, the metal in hue. Now, if you want to come in and bring in your own base metal, I've also made that very easy for you as well. All you need to do is just zoom out a little bit and you'll see one that says texture change. And these are basically groups. So if you click on this group, press the tab button, that then will take you into the group. And all you need to do is just replace these with whatever textures you want. You can see here as well that this has a um, output that says color metallic roughness and normal showing you exactly where these things need to be plugged in for any of the others as well they all have the same thing and you just plug them in to each of these in this order and then you'll be able to change that metal now let's move on to the other one then so something like our um iron um where's our iron let's find there it is there's our iron so let's zoom into it and you can see straight away this actually looks like iron but the best thing about something like this because it's a little bit less on the color. In other words, it's a little bit lighter. We can now come in and change the base um, hue. So we're able to change this hue, like so you can see the hue slightly changing. We're also able to bring down the vibrance or bring up the vibrance like so. So let's change that hue a little bit. And we're also able to bring up or down the tone of it, as you can see. So you can end up with something like this if you want it highly highly versatile as i said you can see that the gold for instance looks really really nice looks really realistic and you can also see just how easy it is to change these things into something stylized we've even got as i said some obsidian on here and we spend a lot of time actually looking at the details of the metal that we're actually looking at so you can see copper for instance really does look like copper and you can see that something like um where are we Bra um, not brass bronze really really got that kind of bronze look that we're actually going for all right everyone so that is the 3d tudor metal shader we will be adding to this and as i said we are going to be creating lots and lots of shader packs and they're all going to be like this some of the best on the market like our wood shader is if you want to get this for free along with all of our courses then think about joining one of the best patrons in the industry and I'm going to play a short advert of that now because I hate playing it in the beginning because people don't want to see that. They want to see exactly what we've actually created here. All right, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you find them incredibly useful like we do and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Hey everyone, do you want to have access to hundreds of Blender products every single month? Then check out our brand new Patreon which is probably the best in the industry, especially for beginners to Blender. Best of all, we now have four Patreon levels, pretty much for any budget. Or if you just want to follow us over there for the latest news on 3D Tudor, then that's also fine. So let's now take a look at these ranks and stay till the end to find out what we really have to offer. So rank one is all about just supporting us at five euros per month. And this is just to say a big thanks for everything that we do here. Rank two at 10 euros per month comes with a free course every single month. And if you've seen the scenes that we've been creating here on YouTube, where you can get your hands on any of these for absolutely free. And you will get your name featured at the end credits of all of our YouTube videos. Moving on and stepping it up to rank 3, at €19.50 per month, you get pretty much the same as you did in rank 2, but this time we also give you two geometry nodes per month absolutely free. And moving on to the big one, which is rank 4, the top tier that we have at €48.50 per month, and you pretty much get the whole shebang. Two free courses per month, any of our geometry nodes, any of our model packs, any of our YouTube scenes, but best of all, you also get the complete asset manager file, complete with our entire library of compositors, materials, 
and assets, and this will just keep growing. So whatever your budget, there's never been a better time to support us here at 3D Tudor, and I think we provide one of the best patrons in the industry. So head on over, check out our Patreon, follow us over there for the latest news, and if you can, we'd be very grateful for any support, large or small.